Hello everyone, we are the students of VIT Pune. Welcome to our video. We the group 6 of Division G will explain you about the various types of memories. So let's see the first type of memory which is the primary memory also called as the main memory. Primary memory is directly accessible by the CPU. It is where the computer stores the data and programs that are currently being executed by the CPU. When we play an audio file, our system manager that is operating system manages the space within the primary memory to perform the instructions which is understanding the mouse click or opening the default application for playing the file after bringing it from secondary storage into the primary memory. Now as because we need the execution of instruction as quick as possible, the cells in the primary memory the cells in the primary memory can be accessed in any order. Moving further to types of primary memory. The first type is the random access memory which is also called as RAM and the another type is the read only memory or ROM. ROM is non-volatile that is it can retain data even if power is turned off. On the other hand RAM is volatile that is it cannot retain data when power is turned off. Let's see these types further. So let's get started with one of the most important types of primary memory that is RAM that which stands for random access memory. A random access memory is a form of computer memory that can be read and changed in any order typically used to store working data and machine code. A random access memory device allows data items to be read or written in almost the same amount of time respective of the physical location of the data inside the memory which makes it independent of the address. It is also known as a type of volatile memory because when there is a power cut or there is no power supply in the system, the data present on the RAM gets vanished that's why the regulator power supply is needed to operate the ram also it is smaller in size than that of the main memory basically there are two types of ram that is sram and dram sram stands for static random access memory and dram stands for dynamic random access memory as SRAM is static, it, it has longer uh, lifetime than that of the dynamic uh, RAM. Uh, as it has, at, as SRAM has the uh, long lifetime, there is no need to refresh the data on the SRAM. Whereas the DRAM, which is dynamic in nature, it, its data needs to be refreshed continuously. SRAM is faster than that of the DRAM uh, that's why SRAM you sometimes it is used as cache memory whereas the DRAM is used only as the random access memory SRAM is larger in size than that of the DRAM uh, also the SRAM is expensive than the DRAM because of all these features SRAM needs high power consumption to be operated uh, whereas in the DRAM the less power is sufficient to operate it. Next type of a primary memory is ROM. ROM stands for read only memory. So ROM is a primary memory which is directly accessible by the CPU and is used to store critical data that is needed to boot up the computer and run the operating system. So ROM involves programming and reading. It is used to store firmware and operating system code. It is used in embedding system to store program data. And it is also used in a video game console to store game data and software. So ROM is further divided into three subtypes. First is PROM which is programmable read-only memory. Next is EROM which is erasable programmable read-only memory. 
and the last is double e pro which is electrically erasable programmable read only memory so let's see each of them in detail so first is pro so pro is a type of a non volatile memory it cannot be changed or erased easily it is inexpensive to manufacture it does not require a complex manufacture process it does require specialized equipment to program the chip and it is not very flexible so next let's see eprom so eprom is a non volatile memory it requires exposure to uv light to erase a data on the chip the data on the chip can be erased and reprogram as needed it is it is flexible in programming and erasing the data can be inconvenient and time consuming so next let's see double e prom so double e prom is a type of a non volatile memory that can be reprogrammed multiple times data can be erased and reprogrammed using electrical signals it is slower to write and requires multiple step to erase and reprogram each memory set so now we will see the secondary memory secondary memory is the type of any computer memory that is used to store the data and programs that can be accessed or retrieved even after a computer is turned off unlike primary memory which is volatile and temporary secondary memory is non volatile and can store the data and programs for extend period of any time so further the secondary memory can be classified into two types magnetic storage devices and second is solid state storage devices so magnetic storage devices such as hard disk drives magnetic taps uses magnetic fields to store the data and retrieve the data second is solid state storage devices solid state storage devices such as solid state drives flash memories use as semiconductor based memory chips to store the data so first is flash memories and second is solid state drives some of the examples of secondary memory hard disk drives hdds solid state drives sdds optical disk such as cds and dvds flash memories such as usb drives and memory cards these storage devices provide much larger capacity than the primary memory and are typically used to store the large amount of data such as operating system application programs media files and other types of digital contents advantages and disadvantages of secondary memory advantages of secondary memory it is non volatile in nature which means that the data and programs stored on secondary memory can be accessed even after the computer is turned off additionally secondary memory devices provide a large storage capacity make it possible to store the large amount of data and programs disadvantages to secondary memory such as slow access times and low read write speed compared to primary memory let's see cache memory cache memory is a type of a high speed memory that is used to temporarily store frequently accessed data or instruction that cpu might need to access quickly it is smaller but ultra fast memory that is located between cpu and the main memory of a computer that is ram cache memory is typically divided into several levels with each level having different size and speed the first level cache l1 is smallest and fastest cache memory and it is typically built in the cpu itself the second level cache l2 cache is larger but slower than the l1 cache and is usually located on the cpu chip or on the separate chip on the motherboard higher level caches such as l3 cache is present outside the cpu and it is slower than the l1 and l2 but faster than the ram 
the size and the speed of a cache memory can have significant impact on the performance of a computer. Larger cache sizes can improve performance by reducing the number of times the CPU needs to access the main memory. Faster cache speed can reduce the time it takes for the CPU to access data or instruction from the cache memory. Now comes the resistors. Resistors as a memory. So a resistor is a small amount of very fast computer memory that is directly built into the processor. Resistors are used to store data that the CPU needs to access quickly such as operands for arithmetic operations, intimate results, memory addresses and control information. Resistors are an integral part of the CPU and are organized into a register file. The size of the register file varies depending on the specific CPU architecture. Then comes the types of registers. So there are totally seven types of registers. The first one is data register. So data register is a 16-bit register which is used to store operands or variables to be operated by the processor. It is temporarily stores data which is being transmitted to or received from a peripheral device. Then comes a program counter. It holds the address of the memory location of the next instruction which is to be fetched after the current instruction is completed. So it is used to maintain the path of execution of the different programs and thus executes the programs one by one and the previous instruction gets completed. Then comes the instruction register. It is a 16-bit register which stores the instruction which is fetched from the main memory. So, it is used to hold instruction codes which are to be executed. The control unit takes instruction from the instruction register, then decodes and executes it. Then comes the ECMID register. It is a 16-bit register which is used to store the result produced by the system. For example, the results generated by the CPU after the processing are stored in the AC register. Now comes the address register. It is a 12-bit register that stores the data for memory location where instructions or data is stored in the memory. Then comes input-output register. Its job is to specify the address of a particular input-output device. Then comes the buffer register. Its job is to exchange the data between an input-output module and the CPU. Then comes the advantage of registers as a memory. So first advantage is the registers are much far faster to access than the main memory as they are located directly on the CPU chip. The speed data advantage allows the CPU to perform calculations and access data more quickly, improving overall system performances. There is a note that registers are volatile memory, meaning their contents are lost when the power is turned off.